Okay, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so when last we left you guys, uh, you had managed to defeat a uh, a Git Yankee, um, say it, uh, pirate squad, um, and uh, you currently the the Git Yankee are dead. Um, the uh, one of the dragons is dead. <laughs> One of the dragons you managed to negotiate to not fight at all, and the other one is currently bawling his eyes out. <laughs> I, think we still have, I think we still have one Gith Yonki that we have tied up, right? He surrendered oh, yeah, at the end. Right. He surrendered, sorry. So, okay. what do you guys want to do? Well, which yes, group do ah! oh. Muscle cramp? No, I think he just spilled co coffee on himself. coffee all over myself. Okay. One moment. Training timeout. Safety. Uh, technical difficulties. Please roll <laughs> So, as I was saying, Scott, uh, <laughs> basically, I was going to try to have um, my character, who is Bill, go and eat some of the dragon and some of the Kith Yankee if nobody stopped him. Uh, as well as, you know, make sure he got clean up of everything. And that's how he's going to get away with trying to do that more. So pretty much just clean up the streets, the area, this and that. Try to get those wires that we had coiled in the back to where they need to be. Um, and then go thank Greladin whenever we get a chance. That's all Bill wanted to do right now. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. By the ball and dragon is just Zashi and Whistler, right? Pretty sure. Yep. Not sure. He moved the maps. So. Yeah, because he was trying to crawl away. So he was kind of. Yeah. And we, we went after him, and he's. You removed the curse on him, I think. Yeah. I think that was the last thing that we did before we stopped playing last. Okay. I removed the curse as it was going to expire anyway. Right. But you did it all dramatically, so it should be evident. Yeah. So I think after cleanup and trying to figure out what's going on, I think we, I'd like to, whether or not Bill wants to, I would think Grelodin or somebody else would actually go through and make sure all the people were okay, slash accountability, go over inventory, and then figure out what we need to do if this happens again, kind of thing. Yeah. Welcome back, Scott. Sorry about that. It's okay. We no killed worries. five more dragons while you were gone and yeah. leveled up accordingly. You're cool with that, right? Um, sure. Uh, nice. I guess we'll just jump to the end then, and uh, <laughs> we'll fight Vecna, Opal, and um, the Swarm, and let's see. We'll throw Mephistopheles Actually, Opal in there as dragon, well. Actually, Opal so you don't have to worry like about it. that much. I like it. We can just tell you how it went. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so after the, my incident with the coffee, what's everybody doing? And apparently my video is... Is my video frozen on everybody else's? No. No, I can see you. It's oh, we had question on... on my screen. Yeah, Be Becca's very pixelated, but everything else is fine. Okay. Scott, we were just having a question of where we were positioned because we are trying to figure out who was the closest to the sobbing dragon. Mm -hmm. We're pretty sure it's just Zashi and Whistler, but we wanted to verify. Um, uh, let me switch back to that map and then we'll, we'll figure it out. That's the easiest way to do this. Still not sure why it's, for, why my video is frozen on the screen, but everyone can just, oh, now it's unstuck. Okay. Oh. Yay. Huzzah. Okay, so Crying Dragon is the one over here, and that looks like it's Whistler and Zashi. Um, Bill, you are next to the, um, well, there's the Doom Dragon. Brutus is currently staring off into space. 
store me right next to the large dragon and uh there's we'll, we'll move this gif over here that's tied up okay so i know whistler and zashi aren't done with our dragon because uh whistler did remove the curse all dramatically so mm -hmm. hopefully the dragon it knows it's evident that um, uh, it, it, it definitely flexes his wings, but uh, he's just like. It, it, I'm just, I'm just following my big boor, my big brother. I, I'm really sorry. I didn't know this was like this. <laughs> well, he let's... Uh, he's he'd be talking to Whistler actually. He's kind of terrified of Zashi right now. He's... What language should no, he was asking? No, but what language? Uh, is conic. <laughs> He, he would default to his most comfortable language, so he'd be talking Draconic. Okay. Does Zashi so, speak Draconic? Yeah, Zashi does. Okay. Okay. So, Zashi will go, we understand you didn't know what you were getting yourself into. If you agree to work with us, I can prevent all these horrible things that you just had to go through from happening again. If you choose to follow me, I can actually extend the protection to you in a way that you would also get the benefit against your enemies. Uh, well, I, I, I don't want to fight anymore. I, th this is terrible. The ground is like attacking me and I can't fly anymore and, or I couldn't fly anymore. It's like, just as long as it's, can I go back to my, my, my real love? What is your real love? Dance. <laughs> that is definitely something you can do. Um, are you one of the dragons that are able to change your form? I can introduce you to someone that would probably be able to. I mean, I can, but I prefer this form. I can fly, and he actually is just flexing his wings and does, like, complicated in aerial maneuvers at this point. Uh, what is your name? My name is, give me a second here, Kitha Royeth. Kitha Royeth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tucker has a smear. So, so Whistler has flipped through his journal to his copy of the Murder of Crow sound uh, contract. Uh -huh. And he, he had it, like, out. Uh -huh. And then he's kind of looking at, but he's given Zashi the... What? Really? <laughs> Look. He kind of closes his book. Yep. So, um, until we manage to get the city back to where it belongs, I am going to need an agreement from you either to work with us or follow me. And like I said, if dance is your passion, there are some people I can introduce you to that you can pro- Seed with following this passion. Yeah. By the way, my name is Zashi. This is my companion Whistler. It, it, it's it, it's good to to meet both of you. Please please don't kill me. <clears throat> um, I am the law around here. <laughs> um. Okay. Is, is there a law against dancing? No, there is not a law against dancing. Oh, okay. And he, he, he does land back from doing his aerial maneuvers. And he's like, I, I, I'll be good. I'll be good. Just um, when, once I'm able to leave, I'll, I'll leave you guys alone. All right. Would you walk with me back to your, I think it's your brother. Yeah. I believe he, he was discussing something with my friend Storm. Okay, so he uh, starts walking with you, but like he's he's still a full size dragon, so he has to go this way. He has to go north in order to get, like not break. Well, actually, he probably doesn't care so much, so he he will try to like just walk through a building unless you stop it. Uh, I believe there's a larger path over this way. Okay, and I will walk with him around back to where Storm and the others are. Okay, well, that was going on. Storm, Bill, and uh, uh, Daka, what are you guys doing? 
Daco's gathering up the discarded great swords and laying them on the ground in front of the red dragon who is not crying out his eyes and asking if he would please ensure those get back to where they need to be because he knows better. <laughs> he kind of like, uh, yeah, I'll make sure they get back. Um, uh, if you don't mind, I, I, it kind of looks over. Like, would you please keep um, your people from like destroying Simim's body. Um, it. I, I know we pissed you off, but um, we do have our own funerary rites, and the more he's intact, the better it would be for his soul. <laughs> You'll probably have to ha ask Zashi to intervene with Bill. Like a rabid dog, when you try to interrupt their meals, they get a little upset. He actually looks at Ben's like, no, I don't mean the eating. I mean like the like this, the the eating is just part of the cycle of the world. I mean just the because you do see the, a lot of the townspeople are just like mutilating this corpse out of just sheer anger. The dragon. Yeah. <sighs> Storm will walk over there and try to persuade people not to attack the corpse <laughs> of the dragon. We, it's like, can you please just hold on? We understand you're mad. The dragon's gone. The others are taken care of. Give me a but persuasion check. It's, it, normally, like this would be pretty easy to do, but the, like it, it fell on them and um. But, like some of them are hurt, and they, they storm is hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you get a few of them to stop, but you you do notice the like, and they do stop, but you notice that a few of them like kick the corpse on their way out. And... Yeah. So as long as they're not like you know mm -hmm. mutilating it anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so the dragon actually just looks down and says, uh, so, um, when are you gonna, re when are you gonna release that? And it it's a little weird because it's like a clawed forearm, but it, it indicates the kind of force field above you. Hmm. Who's he talking to? Don't just, put it in place. You guys in general. Uh, well, I'm not quite sure what's going on too much with that anyways. I think Zashi knows why there's a force field above us. But, I mean, we're, we're stuck here until we can figure out a way to go home. And then once we get a way to go home, we'll, it'll be released. Oh, okay. Um, well... So here's the thing. I mean, it, you have to understand. It takes a lot to keep a uh, keep a creature of my size, and and just being near this dragon, you, there's there's waves of heat coming off of him. Like to keep my metabolism going, I can go into hibernation, um, so that I don't burn down your entire city looking for food when I get hangry, but. <laughs> The uh, I'm gonna need a lot of gold. I flip back to my book and I run over to him with the contract. <laughs> okay, he looks like you'll pay me. I I mean I have a lot of gold. I need like a bed made out of it. Probably for me and my brother, honestly. <laughs> I know he's into this whole dance thing. But, like, he has the same problem I do. It, and honestly, when he gets hangry, it's way worse. He's younger than me. He he tends to be a little bit bitchier. Well, unfortunately, it wouldn't be a permanent transfer of funds uh, for your bed. Would actually a nice, warm sand... No, section absolutely not <clears throat> what happened to the, the the book with the tower um I, that got flooded after you yeah we don't have that worm 
<laughs> oh yeah. I, I once mean, killed a giant hippo worm all by myself. It's literally how I sleep. Like I cover myself in a mound of gold. And that's 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 that, that's how we do. <laughs> it might be easier if you assist us get Get this resolved, that way you can return to your horde. I mean, okay, how do we do that? Well, I think we need to distract the green-eyed glowing creature and weaken the weird opalescent dragon thing. And maybe at that point we can get some of our other... Allies. I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't remember seeing any kind of opalescent dragon or green-eyed glowing creature. Well, we need to find those things, I think. Once we find them, we might be able to do something about this and get every this all resolved. Okay. I, I, do you have any plans for finding them? I am going to have to discuss that with my more arcane companions and see what we can come up with. I'm not sure if they have any sort of weird, I don't know. You know where people look into the ball or the mirror and look at other creatures far, far away? Because Sashi doesn't know what this is. Trying? Yeah, something like that I think we might be able to use to track them down. Oh, okay. Oh. If, if that's all you need, and he starts making this gagging sound. Are you okay? Did you swallow a hairball? Give, give me a sec. It takes a while because again, he's 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 huge, and like eventually he just vomits out the. It's a decent sized sphere, about this big. <coughs> And I'm on the one character I play that wouldn't care. <laughs> yes, go look at the the orb. It's a perfectly round crystal sphere. I'll try to identify it. The orb of scrying. Like you, you don't even know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm? I don't know what an orb of scrying does. I'm looking it up. <laughs> okay. So Scott, Bill would like to take this time since we, you know, we're actually talking and whatnot. Like I said before, with cleanup wise, going and taking a piece of the Githyanki, going and taking a piece of the dragon, and then helping clean up around as well as checking and making sure if we're missing any people. Since uh, we had only we took accountability since you transferred. Yeah. Um. So the uh, cleanup doesn't take too long. Uh, go ahead and give me. Mainly because the kobolds are already like actively running around cleaning everything up. Um, but go ahead and give me a. Um, I think of what this would be. Uh, we'll say an investigation check. Not sure that would be the. Um, so, you're you get a head count and at least ten people are missing, but you're not entirely sure who. With that eight investigation. Uh, is there anything else? Just the eating part. Okay. Uh, I, I'm gonna say on, on both the gith and the dragon, you, you don't really get any. You, you eat. It, it, the gith is kind of tough and gross, and the uh, red dragon has kind of a spicy taste to it. But there's no like powers they input part um and that's okay anyone else there's nothing on D, &D beyond called it more what the no. orb of scrying isn't on D, D beyond okay I, I might have the name wrong
you can just say it lets you scry on whatever you want. To yeah, it, it 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 basically it gives you a free use. It gives you scrying for three times. It's like day. just a crystal ball. I'm pretty sure, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, there are crystal balls. Okay. Yeah, it's just it just casts the scrying spell. Yeah, it's a crystal. That's save DC seventeen. Yeah. Okay. It's just from a dragon's uh, stomach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, if only it were secretly a dragon orb. No. Jeremy <laughs> <laughs> Irons isn't around. I can't use the, the a dragon orb. Man. Okay. Well, we need to make sure all of our people are accounted for and then prep to use this and come up with a plan for for addressing it once we see where these two entities are. Okay. Um, at that point, I, I just tap on Zashi's shoulder and I make a little image of a foot in an ancient elven boot. That just kind of, just a foot in a boot, just kind of ends at an odd angle. And I make it go away. An elven boot? I'm huh. assuming your odd angle is also cut off like like Yeah, like it's going through a portal. Yeah. Yeah. Did one of our elven companions get cut off when we transferred here? Oh, no. I, I, Becca doesn't remember this, but Zashi would, because it literally happened a day ago. <laughs> Zashi didn't see it happen. Nobody was in the room with him. Oh, yeah, oh. that's right. Never mind. Um, he will just turn around and point towards the crumbled tower, though. Hmm. And then he will... Hold up his finger, and then he will walk off, and he's looking for the the soldier that Zashi saved. Okay. It's like at this point, just why doesn't Whistler just write it down on a paper? <laughs> <laughs> just write it. Technically, he get a can. notebook. Would be really funny is if he just drew in pictographs of the exact same things. Like he draws a bird and then himself yeah, and then the foot in a boot. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I haven't seen it already written down by somebody else. I can't write the words. The, the, the way, because it's not like an impediment, it's a curse. He literally mm -hmm. can't. <clears throat> yeah. He's able to think all these things, he, but he has no ability to communicate as part of the curse. Then he needs to be better at charades. <laughs> He's not a bard. There's no performance skill involved. <laughs> Got an eight charisma. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you just need a better insight. Uh, maybe. I mean, I could do an insight check to see if Zashi can figure it out instead of tired Becca brain. Yeah, sure. Give me an insight check. Considering you didn't even see the foot, I'm gonna give set this DC at 17. <laughs> God. As far as you're aware, Whistler wants you to cut somebody's foot off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Well, while we're doing all of the, I guess while I wait for Whistler and we get the head count and everything, can we take a short rest? Sure. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. Yeah, that's not right. Nope, what am I doing wrong? Slash R. Thank you. Um, around, at some point in the short rest, the uh, the dragon, whose name you still don't know, um, will um, kind of look. So about the gold, 
or the uh, or at least another source of food. So there was a very large herd of cows to the northwest. We could see if that herd is transported with us. That would actually provide a pretty good okay, give me a perception check. Perception? Yeah, all of you can make this. We can all attempt to make it, you mean? Mm -hmm. uh, Bill, you actually make it. The DC is not that high. Uh, Bill, you get... Uh, oh, I'll let everybody else do it. Daco, you don't make it. DC is 11, by the way, guys. That's normal. Um, okay, so... Bill, you notice there's like, like a murmur through the, through the onlookers. Like, is this actually negotiating our food supply? <laughs> no. I'll be right back. I mean, we have say it ain't so, Josie. Clean us, don't we? What was that, Bill? Saying, say it ain't so. No, I'm Start not food. negotiating away our food supply. We should just see how many gold it would actually take for them to lay on, and then see if we can reduce them. <laughs> Well, they can also change forms, too. Okay. The problem is, I don't think with the city being transferred, we have a large cache of gold for them to nap on unless we discuss it with Resplendent, and I don't think Resplendent likes sharing her bed with strangers. I mean, they're shiny, right? <laughs> the dragons? Yeah. We can, we can polish them up. Make it more appealing. So I'm not sure Bill would know, or I should say I don't think Bill would know, and I don't I don't know. But could we get like metal and use gold and make it into flakes and pour it all over the place, or does it have to be consistently solid gold? Or just plate a large bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is that almost out of iron. interesting. So, well, we're gonna go ahead and plate it in gold. <laughs> they weren't specific. They just said they need to sleep on gold. You know, is it a certain yeah. area thing or a value thing? What are we looking at here? <laughs> That's an interesting question. I, I want to know, though. I mean, I don't know how I'm carrying around 1,939 gold coins, but it's not on my I, character sheet. <laughs> oh, man, I have so much gold. That's not like, even I haven't been spending platinum. it, so I've just been collecting. I have, like, tons of platinum pieces. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know... 868 platinum pieces, 1,900 gold pieces. I, yeah. I think we I'm, can come up with, with a bed solution if it's not a value system. If it's a size thing, I think we got this. I have over 2,000 gold, 882 platinum, 3,000 silver pieces. <laughs> you should probably convert those. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine the big bag that we're all dragging around filled with coins. <laughs> It's my stripper money. What are you talking about? <laughs> Most of us would leave our gold back in the temple in our sleeping areas, but some of us who aren't. Yeah, we have we have a screen with the power that they can lay in. We were wondering if, like, could we do a gold cloth or something and like wrap the dragons in it, or does it actually have to be coin? Any gold will work, so um, do you guys know how to spin gold? Is this based on value or size? Uh, surface area. Circumference. Surface so area, that's even It just has to wrap them, right? <laughs> just a, a gold burrito. So again, I think a large iron dais that we just plate the top of it in a sheen of gold, we're set. <laughs> Very thin layer of gold. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a smith friend, right? Yeah, Kaylee's still around. I mean, I'm a metal bender. In theory, I could probably bend gold, but <laughs> I haven't no, tried yet. Metal, you can bend gold. Um, I'm just, I don't know if you can 
when was gold plating invented? Does, it doesn't <laughs> require like electricity to do that. What what year is it now in game? Five fifty six. No, that was Daco just invented gold plating via bending. <laughs> I, I now have to. It's like year two if you're using the shard calendar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just to take a rocket scientist to figure this right. out. We just need it very thin. <laughs> it doesn't even have to really be bound. It's like a sheet of thin gold. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm looking up how gold plating works. Thank you. <laughs> Let me go ahead and roll one for my Arcana check so you can tell me I fail. <laughs> can we help him? Uh, oh, we can not roll a, one. I don't know. What the hell is science? In a nature check? It's not an Arcana check. All right, we can do that too. <laughs> We're just all going to be making checks now. <laughs> Roll every skill you have once. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. I will act. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Bill, I, I'm not entirely sure, but you seem to have an in depth knowledge. He just ate dragon. So he's got like this affinity for gold. It's very temporary, but it's there. Yeah, he, you barely you know the science behind gold plating. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have to use a. Uh, you're gonna use a, a, an electrolytic to pull the um, atoms of gold off of a source of, in order to make the thinnest gold plating. You're gonna have to use an electrolytic and a good amount of electricity to do so. <clears throat> To ionize um, the gold and pull it onto, but you're not entirely sure that's a great. It, like you'll have to do it to. You probably don't want to do it directly to the dragon because that'd probably not be good for the dragon. <laughs> gold plate the dragon. Sweet, we have a statue. <laughs> <laughs> he can rest. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Someone's got lightning bolt, right? Pretty sure I've seen someone tossing that spell around. Yeah, just like lightning bolt them in the gold. So, so if I understand your plan right now, is to use <laughs> an electrolytic, which I'm sure you can talk to Abernathy and he has something. Um, a a very large piece of, piece of cloth, and you're going to make two gold blankets, or I just make one big flat sheet of gold, like. <laughs> You're gonna need at least two because one has to because they have to lay on it and they have to cover themselves in it. Oh, well, I, mean, I guess we need. I guess we need the blanket with flat plan then. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so is that what you guys are gonna do? Well, did I find the guard? Oh yeah, the, the, the guard's definitely there. Okay, so yeah, I drag him back. Okay. I don't ask him. I just grab his hand and pull him. Okay. And I also grab Sandy's um, donation cup. Okay. Me. And, and I pull him back to the square. Okay. The, the guard is like, looks at the red dragon. Is like, well, I don't want to be a sacrifice. <laughs> I swear I'm not a virgin. I swear I am not a virgin. <laughs> Inside check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, this guy's definitely a virgin. Got our sacrifice, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And I show him the boot. Okay. He looks at the boot. Looks at the, the foot is still in the boot. I think. You never removed Well, it. it's a boot. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't have. Oh, it's yeah. an illusion of. A, yeah. <laughs> he looks like God. What the hell is that? Is, is, are you telling me that uh, there's only going to be my boots left? <laughs> I, I don't. He pees want himself. To, I don't want to take his foot off, Whistler. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you let Whistler go off on his own. So 
how the game knife things. Um, I point to his head. I actually tap on his forehead, and then I tap on the boot. I and then I tap on the illusion of the boot. And then I like, I point to Zashi. <laughs> um, what is Zashi? I point to myself, and I go. So Zashi uh, points to Zashi. This is whistle. And um, you want me to wear a boot on my head? No, I think he's asking your name or possibly if you know who the boot belonged to. And then uh, he's like, and he jumps and flaps his arms a little bit. Okay. I, I, it looks at the boot and like, um, I mean, it, it's hard to tell just from a boot, but they, they, it looks, I mean, the footwear looks like it was one of our chancellors. Um, my name is Aden. Um, and I extend my hand towards him to shake. He takes your hand or and then, better. <laughs> and then, and then I point to the, I look at Sashi, I point to the crystal ball and say, Chancellor. You want to try to find the Chancellor? Okay. I, I guess we can start with that. <clears throat> okay, I have to look up Scry now. Because <laughs> Scry is one of the most complicated, like, can get really complicated. <laughs> and then I I look over the, so the soldier and I hand him the empty cup and um, then point to the crowd. <laughs> Okay, the first thing I need... It's in the chat window if you need it. E yeah. Um... So somebody actually has to attune to the crystal ball to use it. Yeah. So... I, 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 well, we took a short to... rest, so... Yeah, whoever wanted to during the short rest could have. Um... So first, before we even start, I need a D percentage check. Ninety nine. <laughs> okay. The re if, if you wanted to know, there was a like two percent chance he was on in the astral plane because it, it scrying only works on the creatures in the same plane. And you, yeah, you guys managed to roll a ninety nine, which means he's on the same plane as you. <laughs> 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 So that's cool. Okay, now the target must make a wisdom saving throw, which is modified by how well you know the target and the sort of physical connection you have to it. If a target knows your can which it doesn't, you can fail the saving throw voluntarily. Uh, okay, so that's a uh, second hand you've heard of the target. Uh, first hand, familiar. It's probably heard of the target since. Yeah, I'm gonna go second hand because you don't even. So we're gonna go second hand. So it gets a plus five. Um, I don't count the boot as a likeness or a picture. Mm -mm. You don't have the boot on you, so you don't have the possession or garment. Um, or a, if if you would have kept the foot, it would have had a body part, <laughs> which is a minus ten. <laughs> so there's save. So let me go ahead and roll this. And since someone has to attune to the orb, I guess Zashi will, since I would have the spell, the uh, attunement slot, so long as I'm not attuned to the uh, purple amulet. I'm just going to roll this the d20. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll have to do the whole thing. So it is a wisdom save. Yeah, okay. Just fails. Cool. Um, yeah, so Zashi, you're the one scrying? 
I guess so. So you... This is a little weird, because technically his body isn't on the same plane as you, but his spirit is, so we'll say it works. Um, you see yourself in, it looks like a monastery. A uh, kind of ethereal-looking elven gentleman um, with a shaved head is uh, kind of like just perusing over various like inscriptions in the wall of this area. Okay, I will verbalize everything that I see. Um, the uh, the wall itself. Um, what language would it be? Uh. Do you speak Celestial? I do not. I speak what Abyssal. Infer infernal or Abyssal? I speak Abyssal. Okay, so the character is recognizable. You know it's... You'd probably know it's Celestial just from, like, because you know Abyssal, so you, uh... Like, the three... Uh, all those languages are related to each other. Mm -hmm. So they use the same alphabet. Um, but the words make no sense. It would be gibberish to you. Um, but whoever this person is, he seems to be just like studying this writing in, in this temple. Okay. Um, he doesn't seem to notice you. So that's what I've got, guys, is this Chancellor person spirity thing. I will say he has a peg leg. He's already got a peg leg? Well, he doesn't have a leg anymore, remember? Yeah, but... He seems... Like, it's weird to see an old elf, but you see it... He looks to be. A, yeah. When he got uh, pushed okay. through, he wasn't in the time he dilation was, anymore. He wasn't pushed through. He he had got his, his leg cut off, and he's been a lot. He's been a spirit for the past bazillion years. Mm -hmm. it's, see, I thought he was trapped in the portal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I got you, and I kind of implied that he was, but like, yeah, no, it's not. <clears throat> okay. Um, I guess I can... Uh, I don't know how many times I can use the orb in a single day to try. But... Actually next... does, I, weirdly, I'm looking at this, the, the, uh, the uh, crystal ball thing, and it doesn't have a limit, so... No, it doesn't. Just <laughs> Well, I it just guess is. I will... I'll attempt to scry on Opal. I, will, I think scrying takes time, though, because the actual casting of the spell takes 10 minutes. So, yeah. Okay. You'll go. So, in, in third edition, having a crystal ball negated that 10 minutes because the ball was doing it, not the caster. But that was third edition. It, the, the way crystal ball is just you cast scry with a DC of 17. Okay. So... Pretty much all it acts, because I think scrying is a ritual of spells, too, so most of the time it just basically makes it so you don't have to spend the extra time ritual casting. Okay, so you're scrying on Opal? No, I've actually seen Opal. Yeah, so that would be, so it doesn't get a bonus to save, but, um, and you don't have any, but you don't have any body parts. Mm -hmm. uh, let me go back over this. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so first hand, you're not particularly familiar. Uh, you, you don't have a lightness. You don't have possession. You don't have a body part. So next time you see her. Grab a toenail clipping. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, so not only did that happen, I, I wanted to know if you got any 
image of Opal. You actually will go ahead and I need you to make a intelligent saving throw. Ooh. As Opal senses what you're trying to do. 21. Okay, uh, you take the full amount of this. I do. Oh, no. You take 42 points of psychic damage as Holy feedback shit. comes shooting back through this. Uh, uh, this Good this. thing you took that short rest. <laughs> oh, I've got a split headache. You are also, well, technically it comes out as you are also stunned for one minute. Maybe it's just a single time use crystal. Ball. Was, there a, was there a physical manifestation of this feedback or just Zashi in pain? Um... I would say anyone that has any kind of attunement to magical, so Bill definitely would see this. I would say Whistler probably would notice too. Um, tendrils of like white energy shot through her hand, and then you also saw like blood vessels start like rippling from her <laughs> eyes. As uh, and oh, owie, owie, owie. Zosti, did you get the wrong number? <laughs> uh, I think. I think it noticed me. And Opal was which one? The, the god of magic. <laughs> the the god of magic. <laughs> or one of the creatures trying to become the god of magic. I should be clear on that. No, I think it noticed me. I am going to need a bit before I try drawing on anyone else like at least another hour we get teleported to the newest place and you start getting lazy say again just a little shock you should be okay i've seen you take worse yeah it's still gonna need a bit to be able to concentrate bill I'm not going to be able to concentrate properly while there's this ringing in my head. Sad they didn't accept the collect call. Yeah, well, I get my head in order. Anyone else have thoughts on how to track these entities down? Um, Whistler will just flick his hands and make his eyes show green flame again. Yeah, he's who I was going to go for next. But I do need another short rest because I'm <laughs> six health points again. Um, and then um, I will Shrug, and I'll point over to Bill. Um, and I will mouth like I'm talking, but not actually say anything. Do you want to do insight to see if I can actually read his lips? Or beak? <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, he doesn't really have lips. He has a beak, so... Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm saying the word that we're not supposed to say. But only Bill knows that. <laughs> yeah, I do. So do I get it with the fifteen? Yeah, you got it. Yeah, not your. So then I say it out loud. Nine? Did you mean not your? <laughs> A slight tremor happens, but otherwise nothing. Okay, do you want me to scry on him? Is that what you're asking? Okay. <laughs> so I can try scrying. I think I'm pretty good at looking at other people. It's going to take you an hour to attune to the ball. I think we got time. I'll, I'll try to attune. That way you can rest and if something happens, I can uh, try as well. Are we still standing in the middle of the street for all this? Should we maybe like... <laughs> as far as I know, I think... you guys haven't said that you're going anywhere yeah. else. I didn't want to carry the orb. It's all gross. 
especially if you're going to look in on someone who might not want to be looked in on that, you know, maybe can do things back. Maybe standing out here in the open surrounded by innocence is not the greatest idea. Well, thank you for the insight. Now we know. <laughs> is, is anybody putting money in the Knight's Cup? Yeah, actually, a, a bunch of people are like, dropping like, like random change. If you're looking for gold, it's not. I walk over there, I look at it, and I dump what's ever not gold on the ground. Put it in, and I'll take my 28 gold, which is all the gold I have, <laughs> and put it in the cup. Okay. So, it, so is Bill going to attune to the thing, and we're gonna, you're going to try to scry on the night orb? Uh, yes, after we rolled it. No, no, not the night orb, because I was told not to scry on the night orb. Okay. So pretty much roll the orb to wherever we feel safe, because he wasn't even worried about that since he wasn't aware of it. Uh -huh. uh, hopefully clean it off as he moves it as well. And then tune to it, and then hopefully by that time, both, uh, both him and Zashi can both use it if uh, she has a feedback again, or he has a feedback. It's not exa but in order to speed things up, we're just going to say, okay, that's not usually how a tune works, but just to make it not. Well, I was or, thinking... Because it's a crystal ball, three people can attune to it at once, just to make it yeah. easier. Bill, Bill doesn't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we... And you do know, actually, with that, um, we'll say also that any psychic feedback you guys suffer will be split between three of you. Will be di can be divided between three of you if you all if three people are attuned to it. You don't have to split it. One person could take the full brunt of it. But yeah, Bill offers to go next and scry on whoever we need to, since uh, he probably has more health right now. Okay. Uh, try to scry on the whispered one. You know that green eyeball guy, but he was in Amethyst's body, so we might be able to use one of our amulets to assist with this. Okay, Bill will try. Okay. Hey, um, so you try, and I don't know what to roll for this, you automatically fail. Like, Vecna might have a protection against Brian. Yeah, it didn't work. Who okay. next? Uh, can we use this opportunity to look for the people that were missing? Yeah. Uh, if you that mention way we're... it, um, yeah. uh, go ahead and whoever wants to spend some time looking for them, go ahead and give me uh, perception checks. Let's say for this. Okay. Um, Storm, you actually... So, the people missing... Um, <clears throat> Four of them get turned up. They they were under some rubble. Um, uh, let's see how many are dead. Uh, three of which are dead. Um, the uh, the other six. Uh, one of them is um weirdly uh the kobolds are starting to freak out because they don't know where Resplendent went. And uh, the other five are—I'll uh, get you their names, but they're the—it's the, uh, the hobgoblin family. So resplendent's missing. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And the hobgoblin family is missing. Yeah, the one that just had a kid. Well, let's try. Scrying on Resplendent and the family. Okay. Uh, Resplendent, so Resplendent can't choose to fail it because she doesn't know you're casting it. However, you, you're very familiar with with her. I'm sure you have um, various... Uh, you, you could easily find a, uh, a painting of her and um, like discarded scales, so with all of that, there's no way she can succeed on her success. Um, she is 
curled up in it looks like a cavern um and looks it is in her teenage form and is just covering her head um it uh like holding on to onto her hair um head and is is muttering about um just leave me alone just leave me alone i don't want to listen to you anymore do we recognize what cavern she's in? Yeah, it's her home cavern. Okay. We originally found her. And she's by herself? Yeah. Well, since she's in her cavern, she's not too far away. We could at least go check on her while someone else scries for the Hobgoblin family and checks on them. You know, we could send the kobolds to go look for her. That way we'd all be here in town, just in case. Yeah, the way she was acting, I think some, she might be in trouble. I think a couple of us at least should go. I'll go. I will go with Storm. Bill, try to find the Hobgoblin family. <sighs> we'll try. Okay. Um, the Hob uh, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and roll, because I still don't... Um, what would you like to roll? No, I, I have to roll. Okay, um, they do fail. Um, the, uh, I'm trying to think here. Um, what you noted, what you see is they seem, they're, they're all together. Um, they look to be like in a cage being carried by clawed feet. Uh, uh, with red scales on it, and it, as you kind of look up from your scrying orb, you see a Githyanki rider, and they're headed towards a very large floating temple in the middle of the astral plane. It looks like they got kidnapped. Okay, we'll let everybody know. We'll crap. Let everybody know everybody's accounted for, so to speak. So no one should worry. Um, and then so ask around if we have an Air Force. <laughs> you know, you have at least two. Well, you'll have. You might have three. But find out how Storm and Zashi do. So Storm and Zashi, you're headed to uh, Splendent. Yep. Yeah, you, you find her, it, it, you can tell why the kobolds couldn't find her before, is she actually, like, sealed off her door. Like, I'm not gonna have you roll for it, but she sealed off her, her, her door, and the, uh, the muttering is actually kind of terrifying. Like, it, it sounds almost haunted in terms of the screen, but you know she's there, so you know it's her. It's her. Okay. Um, <clears throat> is, Storm, do you have any ability to see what's psychically hurting her? Can we get in to try to give her some assistance? Can, can, well, are, can we get in? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we just need to get in. I just need to get into her. Okay. Um, see if this works. <laughs> Uh, yeah, get in and approach her and try to look around to see if there's any indication of what is. And she's just muttering to herself, right? As, as far as anyone can tell, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to walk up to her and I'm going to touch her. I'm going to cast Thought Shield on her. Okay. And it basically, it says you weave a clouding veil over the mind of the creature you touch for the duration. The target's mind can't be read or detected. Creatures can't telepathically communicate with the target unless the target allows it. And the target has advantage on saving throws against any effect that would determine whether it is telling the truth. And it's eight hours duration. So, yeah, she, her, her eyes kind of, like, before they were unfocused and, like, she was thrashing a bit about when you do that her breathing gets um more consistent like it, it's not an instant thing but she they stopped 
and like you can tell she's exhausted <clears throat> and um Storm Sashi? Mm hmm. Thank you. Your th the voices wouldn't stop. Can you tell us about the voices? It started as soon as. It, as soon as we the, the ground started shaking. It was. Telling me to, to call out nonsense words, but I, I know better than to do the bidding of things in this place. Would our temple provide some shielding for her? I also need you to do... I want you to, you guys kind of look around and all the mirrors in this room are broken. Well, that's not a good sign. No. I think we know what was talking to her. Yeah, I think so. I think we need to get her away from the mirrors, maybe into the temple. Yeah. So do we think that the temple might shield her a little bit? Uh, the way the temple is designed, I think it very much will uh, would. Um, you'd have to just kind of mess with the um, hollow spell on it. But yeah, so we'll take her. We'll like we'll set you up at our, our at our place. We we we'll make it real shiny for you. <coughs> no, no more. No, no, yeah, no shiny for now. No, no reflections. Not no. those kinds of reflections. Not mirrors. But shiny it, silver. But yeah, she'll go with you. Okay. As soon as you take her to the temple, she's like, I just, can I just sleep? I just be with my own thoughts for a bit. Yep, let her rest in a nice, her own little cubby room. What's anybody else doing? Where's Abernathy? Abernathy's in his shop. I go into his shop. Okay. Oh, Whistler. It, it's been a long time since I've been to this place. It's it's really bad here. Just We should get home as soon as possible. And I go to wherever his magic paper is and I just grab it all. He, he looks like he might go protest, but they're just like, uh, uh, oh, okay. <clears throat> How much do I grab? Value wise. Value? Uh, you get get five hundred. That's how much he has prepared right now. Okay, so and that is five hundred gold worth. Yeah. So I'll give him fifty platinum. I'll pay for it. Okay. He thanks you. Just clean him out. Yeah. Um. And then, yeah, I'll point to his spell book. He, he will grant you his spell book. Um, what spells are you? I, I'm gonna have to like actually look up some things. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, I'm just checking. You know, he always has spells for sale. <laughs> I'm just shopping. Okay. Let's figure this out. Give me a second. <coughs> Um, as, okay, so in his spell book, he has, give me some, cause it's a spell book, so it, it, there's a lot here. <laughs> he has, well, I, probably, I, I, I guess, I mean, his spell book probably wasn't sitting on the counter. Whatever it is, he puts his scrolls and stuff in. Like, oh, so, okay. That's what I was checking. I was okay, go ahead and, and give me, I'll we'll start with first level spells. Um... Give me a d20 check. Uh, give me two of those real quick. Okay. Uh, 
Expeditious Retreat is available, as is Fairy Fire. Uh, go ahead and give me another D20 check. <coughs> uh, that would be... Uh, Alter Self. Uh, give me another D20 check. Water walk and a final D twenty check, please. Uh, uh it looks like skill empowerment. That's a fifth level spell, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, he'll, I'll take, um, water walk and expedious, expedious retreat okay. and hand him the Aphronathy. Okay. Uh, that would be 150 gold total. Okay. Yep. So he'll just buy those two. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. and then, um, They'll point outside, um, and you know, you know, just say in, um, draconic, you know, we sleep on a pile of gold and point to the, the door and then he'll leave. Okay. Um, Abernathy will kind of look at it and be like, and you'll see, actually see Abernathy walks across the street to the blacksmith and starts talking to um, Kaylee about something. Okay. Yes. Terry. So Bill was going to be, so we were talking about food, things like that, and we don't know exactly how long we're going to be stuck here. Mm -hmm. He's going around asking everybody about food and what they can spare, things like that, if there were no supplies. Um, and then also trying to go around asking for help to rebuild the town, you know, just give people things, something to do, so instead of just a uh, little state of chaos. And then talk to uh, Grelodin about uh, his secret uh, cheese supply that he's been making from the spider milk. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um the spider milk <laughs> the uh yeah um so you actually notice that people are already starting to like gather supplies to fix the roofs and stuff um pretty much everybody is like patently moving around the dragons and not getting anywhere close to them um the uh i, I don't know what um i mean Paladin has cheese for the from the spider milk. It's not particularly tasty, but Bill might like it. I, I, I don't know. Um, it's kind of stringy, honestly. Um, the, uh, uh, I, I will say that um, Monk actually get, gets out of the flower and sickle, looks at the dragons, and sighs, and then calls in and a, um, I can't remember her name, I'll have to look up the name. A relatively, a very beautiful, um, employee of his walks out, tucked under her arm is, like, a bedroll, um, throws it out, and you, a golden blanket ends up spreading across the ground. And then she walks back in. Is it time to burrito the red dragons? So I think also Bill would try to walk around and ask where a good place for us to try to put the dragons would be, since everyone's trying to path around them. Or is everyone comfortable actually having them so they don't have to worry about running into them accidentally? And then also ask people not to take the gold blanket ahead of time. Um, the uh, the most of the people just ask that maybe they 
it can be a little bit further away from the center of town so that they they can go about their 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 business it, you do notice that most like even after this disaster most people seem to be relatively like they're taking it in stride um and uh like they seem patently ignoring the fact that they've been transported to another plane <laughs> out of sight out of mind yeah. well shifting them from the center of the town shouldn't be too hard no right? they, as, as long as they have their gold as long as they, they can sleep on gold they're happy okay <clears throat> So, and, unless you guys have anything else, what do you, um, does, does anyone have a plan? <laughs> yes, oh, I'm... So, the last thing Bill would be going around is asking everyone in town, if there's, other than the people that we know that it's accounted for, if we want to give a funeral for the people that we've lost, as well as ask if anyone has any special needs that we can't meet right now, since we're apart from where we normally are. Um, I think the, uh, no one really says anything, um, like, they, they do want to set up a funeral, um, the, uh, at which point, at this point, Cloudus kind of shows up, um, and, and he's, he's looking around, looks at the golden blanket, um, greed kind of flashing in his eyes, but, like, also sees the dragon back up a few feet. Um, and he, uh, um, and will start trying to organize people. No one's really paying too much attention to him, but, and he, um, is like telling people to do things they're already trying to do. And, but, uh, he, he plowed us. I'll, I'll take care of the funeral arrangements. Which, any, all of you guys, when Plowder showed us up, give me a perception check. Jocko, Plautus is looking better than you. Like, before he was kind of this old, like, with a paunch gut. Like, he, the stress seems to be making him healthier. He's thinner. Um, <clears throat> as much as he's still a coward, he seems to have at least, he's still, like, he seems to be actually, like, trying to take control of things and is moving quicker than you've seen him. With Bill's eyes, does Bill see anything different? Uh, no, actually. Okay. Okay. Well, since all, all right, we'll of those... with a 22, though, Whistler, something is weird about Platter. Like, it's not just that he's healthier. Something... The... You sense something is there, but also that, like, he's being protected from, uh, methods of, um, divination. This was the 22. As I walk by, I just point to him and I... Mm -hmm. That'd make my eye green. <laughs> it kind of gives you a, a, a like an arched look. Um, <laughs> can you give me an insight check. It, it's not threatening. It's, but he, it, it it's not confused either. He, he he's it, it's more amused than anything mm -hmm. else. Okay. So, 
I would like to question our Gith prisoner regarding the kidnapping of our Hobgoblin family, where they're going to be taken, what they're going to be. They will serve Vulcan. The, it is the highest honor a mortal being can perform. Who is this Vulcan? She is our leader and the uh, salvation of us all from the uh, from the trepidations of the illithid. Mm. I actually think it's Vlacketh. Chester Constance yep. oh, corrects me on this. It is. <laughs> Sorry, Vlacketh. But, but in the in, in Sulabos it is Vlacketh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and what are they going to be used for in this service? Depending upon their skills, either labor or war or sometimes food, depends. The dragons get really hungry. And this, you said it was like a stronghold thing that I mean, they were showing no shame like he, he he truly thinks this is like the highest honor of somebody like it's it, ah. it's like religious fervor in his eyes right now yeah so she's not really engaging with his religious fervor mm -hmm. um and where in the stronghold are they going to be held until their various skills are identified mm. They will be held with the tribunal. Um, whether what room the, the temple is impossibly complex. I guess it's time to lock him up until we figure out what to do with him. I don't think leveraging him for our people is going to work with the way Zashi has seen the Githyanki work so far. So, I guess lock him up in a cell for now. Yeah, okay. After completely stripping him down to his skippies so he doesn't have any thing to lock pick with. Okay. Put a couple guards on him. Someone tells me you've done this before. <laughs> yeah, I might have had to do something similar once or twice or a lot in the past. <clears throat> um, Zashi, me and our... Actually, anyone who actually saw this guy fight, so that would be st all of you guys. Give me an Arcana check. <laughs> I need... A guard that's do we? I don't think we have anything to like stop his arcana stuff. Um, I will tell you, Storm. You know he knows Misty Step. You saw him cast it. Yeah, I I say that. <laughs> oh. Well, shit. What the? F We're gonna need to gag him. Well, don't you have to see where you're going with that? Just block off the door. Or better yet, who needs a door? We just make four solid walls. When we went in, Daco can make a door. <laughs> yeah, that 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 might work. Yeah, okay. So you're gonna you, you're gonna put the gift in uh, solitary confinement. Okay. I don't want to. That's actually really cruel, but. <clears throat> What are we going to do with them? Do we need them? <laughs> Bill's hungry. I flipped to my little page with the Murder Crows contract. <laughs> One less thing to worry about. <laughs> you 
want to try to see if he'll contract with us as part of the murder of Gross. It's either that or feed him to the dragons. Yeah, we need more people. <laughs> A religious nut. Don't yeah. get that signing bonus you get. <laughs> like how long would it take to unbrainwash him? Um, I, I don't know. It takes uh, it takes a long time to deprogram people. So, mm -hmm. uh, Daco, do you still have your GIF com follower? <laughs> I don't know. Is he still around? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's accountable. He wasn't In one theory. of the missing people. Yeah, he's probably around here somewhere. All right. He's actually pretty mo like is your character Chester, but he's pretty mopey sure. right now because he kind of missed his opportunity to get back home. Well, I mean, there's still a red dragon around. He could. Okay. <laughs> then yeah, he's here. He's he's mopey. <laughs> he's very close to home right now, which is where he's been trying to get. So. Well, I mean, with the force field, we can't do anything for our goblin companions right now, I don't think, right? Oh, I've never been here. I have no idea. I wish I haven't room. tested the force field. But it seems like it stopped the <laughs> dragons from leaving. Mm -hmm. Storm's not yeah, exactly sure what's outside the force field. Leaving to go to the edge of the force field. What was that? Sorry. Whistler just left. When Zashi said that, Whistler cocked his head and left the room. Okay. Doc was gonna say maybe we should follow him. <laughs> yeah, um, I guess we can drag the Gith prisoner with us for now, and your Gith follower can. Maybe we should start calling him our guest. You know, get a little bit more PC about this. If you're thinking about deprogramming him, <laughs> we can call him our guest. He did surrender to us. See, there you go. If he wants to contract with us, as per the Murder of Crows contract. We can discuss that with him. And we will follow Whistler for the moment. So what's the Whistler doing? Um, so yeah, so when they get out, I've already, Whistler's already cast his evolutionary steed. Okay. Um, he jumps on and he is going to ride until he runs out of land. Okay, um, it's like, you're actually, you're not, because the center is actually where the tower is of this force field, so you're actually only about two miles from the, from the border. Um, you manage, it, it looks like a cliff, like, it's just cut off. Um, you see, it, um, an endless sort of gray beyond that cliff, um, are you going over the cliff? Or are you going to towards the cliff and checking out the field? Or are you just kind of... So, well, the first thing he's going to do when he gets there, when he gets, oh, maybe... Maybe about 20 yards from the... Mm -hmm. 20 yards. Well, actually, when he's about 50 yards away from where he sees the end of the cliff... He is going to get off the horse. Mm -hmm. He is going to reach down. He's going to pick up rocks, pebbles, whatever. He's just going to throw them out in front of him as he walks forward. Okay. Um. So as you get close enough that the rocks are actually going over the cliff, um, he, they actually just go over and disappear through the field. Or float out into the gray. Okay. Okay, so then he... Um, takes it and grabs one and throws it as hard as he can. Like, like a baseball. Okay, give me a strength check. Um, it, go, it goes over the cliff and you see it just kind of 
arc downward into the gray until it's out of sight. Hmm. So Whistler, you want us to throw things? Well, I don't think we would have been able or to keep up with his steel steed, so... Yeah. Daco goes ahead and creates an earth slide out towards the force field <laughs> in case someone wants to go touch Stop. it. <laughs> right, because right. 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 I mean, we can see through it. He's just trying to see where the force field is. Yeah. yeah. It, it, the, the earth slide stops oh, right at the cliff. All, right. All the, the rocks that we're about to form over it just tumble through the force field, but the earth slide itself stops. And my next trick, I shall dig down to see if it goes lower than the surface. So now that I know where that like line, the event horizon is basically kind of like dig down there to see if it's more spherical so you, or a dome. As you dig, you dig down to the cliff. It goes down. Okay. Well, there's some answers for you. <laughs> we know so some are, things. Is he able to push Earth out underneath it? So it, what you because that was what Whistler was trying to figure out too. Is, yeah. What you notice, and, and I would say this that. Um, as Daco gets close to the to it, uh, he his body cannot go through the force field. Through the field, um, and it looks like anything with a magical component can't go through the force field, but just matter passes through easily. Right, but is the force field spherical or hemispherical? Like, does it end at right. the Earth or does it cut through the Earth? That's what we're trying to figure out. It, it cuts through. Okay. Gotcha. <sighs> so... I will ritual. I will ritually cast detect magic. Okay, you can actually see the force field when you do that. Um, and, and so it, it's this is a very weird thing. It is basically what you notice is that it is abjurative and net romantic at the same time. Okay. It seem it it would seem to be a combination of a anti like it's more of a wall than a sphere because it doesn't prevent magic inside the sphere, but an anti magic sphere and an anti life shell. Did storm follow? Yeah. Okay. He walks over to storm. And grabs Storm's arm and tries to drag you towards it. Um, Storm doesn't let you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. <laughs> I don't know what's out there. What's going on? You go out there. Um, and he he gets he leans over and he just like he's going to whisper to you. And he makes the sounds of mummies growing. What about mummies growing? <laughs> Wants to see. And if then I'm he gives you the "I see through. you." And then he points at the, the force field. Take. Like, you see me outside the force field. <laughs> And then he um, tries to grab your hand and um, hold it out in front of you. Like he tries to pull your arm. Because you, what are you, you, you're trying to get me to touch the force field? No, no, no. You're not. He doesn't pull you all the way to the edge. 
He's just trying to extend your arm towards the force field that he can see. Yeah. Okay. And then he makes uses minor illusion to make stuff coming out of your hand and spreading across the force field. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Right? It's like, what are you trying to get me to do? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what Tucker's trying to get you to do either. So. No. I think I do. Roll an insight check. Yeah. yeah. Insight check. So I could fail that. And... <laughs> oh, it's 18. Tucker, what do you want him to do? Oh, Whistler doesn't have to spell magic. Oh. But he knows that. Oh, okay. Not even sure. Do we want yes, to get you rid of have it because that's how you got rid of the. Yeah. Spell. That's why he knows you can do it. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Zashi doesn't know what Whistler's trying to get Storm to do, so she's not going to say anything, even though she knows what they. I thought he wanted you to create a mummy and throw the mummy through to see what happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you write it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Zashi has said that to the rest of the party that we've got a week with this shield and she had said the shield will protect us. She just hasn't explained anything about the big yeah. that had appeared beforehand. Yeah, and yeah, knowing no, that it's protecting us, Storm's not going to cast... Does Knowing, because Storm has dispel magic, does he think that he would be even be able to dispel something of this size anyways? Sure. Yeah, but he doesn't see why not. But it's also, people are saying that it's protecting us. It's also being perpetually cast. Mm -hmm. Creature that's forming it is still encircling you guys. You'd think if you did it, you'd have about approximately six seconds to get whatever you're trying to do done before it got reformed so i just not talking to whistler i go over to zashi <laughs> mm -hmm. i'd be like if you want out i could probably get us out but it'll probably kick back in in like six minutes or six seconds so right so if you were to i could probably get us back in too maybe but mm -hmm. it'd probably be the same thing. It would be contested, so like, because you can't cast ninth level spells. I'm pretty sure this is the equivalent of a ninth level spell. Yeah. So, yeah, you could. Even if you get us out, you might not be able to get us in later. Right. <laughs> well, I think it would be better if we can figure out what's happening with the contested god of magics, and then find a way to get to. The Gith Yonki and our Hobgoblin family <clears throat> at a later date, because right now we don't have a way to get them out of where they've been taken, except with the red dragons. We'd be going up against an entire nation and some sort of weird deity type thing that they worship. We know nothing about their comic. Yeah, you can give me a history check and to figure out because you guys know a Gith Yonki. That twenty. Woo. You've heard of Blackith. Black is, uh, from what you've gleaned, Blackith is simply a lich. Mm -hmm. uh, according to the Gith Yonki, the most powerful of liches, but. But considering you've met the most powerful of liches, you're like, eh. <laughs> we scoff at that. <laughs> <laughs> but we'd still be going against a lich and all of their followers to get out. So do we want to take the time to figure out what we actually want to do? I believe so, yeah. 
we've got multiple problems right now and no real clear path to handle any of them. What's our highest priority right now? Because we're safe for a week or so. So safety is mm -hmm. not up there. We know who's missing. We got to prioritize who we want to go for first slash where we need to go. And then thinking about after uh, the week's done, what are we going to do with the shield? Because we can go anywhere, but anyone can come in. Yeah. So the Hobgoblin family rescue, we would have to figure out and plan for getting Malice back to where it belongs in the material plane. Once we do that, we don't really have an ability to get back to rescue the hobgoblins. But we've only got a week before our protective shield is gone. So we have to get malice back to the material plane within a week. Or figure a way to be able to transport back to it and we're back here. We need to. Right. We're not really worried about our people right now. We're not really worried about food. Is there it anything is... else we have to... So I will let you know, as long as you aren't going to give up all your produce and, cow mm -hmm. and cows to the dragons, you, you have plenty of food to last you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the dragons are going to go into hibernation because we've got a gold blanket for them. And Daco could, in theory, you know, increase our agricultural potential by tilling some fields in an expedited manner. As long as someone's got seeds or, you know, there's a druid around here, maybe, in theory. <laughs> I, 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 just to kind of, I, I think we'll probably end here soon. So uh, uh, just to kind of clarify a, 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 the knowledge you know. You know that you have, so you, Opal is your primary concern, being that they can pretty much eat magic. Um, Vecna is holding them off somewhere, but you don't know where because Opal will cause you psychic feedback if you try to scry on them, and Vecna cannot be scryed on. Mm -hmm. um, the, the You do have creatures that you know what it, it would probably be able to help you. You have the, you have the swarm. Um, they have eyes literally everywhere. Um, and then you have Topaz, who seems to know kind of where their brothers are brothers and sisters are at all times. You know somewhere in here is a a relatively nice dragon in the city that by the name of Ruby, who had who you haven't met, and Sapphire, who's you, you've heard is a misanthrope, but is one of the most powerful telepaths in the material book in existence. Mm -hmm. Um the uh there is this mysterious creature called the night yorb who seems constantly to want to get in but it's also the person who brought us here so yeah. that's probably the one that's going to get us back mm -hmm. just to clarify of everything <laughs> everything that's going on all the the hooks that we yeah. got mm -hmm. well it is about time to have tea with Topaz. Yeah, we should find the other dragons, see if they'll help or not. So is that your plan? You're going to go get tea with Topaz and find out where Ruby and Sapphire are? At least it's a path forward. We might learn something that would help us save our people or weaken opal that uh, opal mm -hmm. okay so the, the, i will plan for that next session and that's where we'll stop for today cool cool yes terry the only thing i also want to make sure is to send some kobolds to try to double check to make sure the time dilations are still time dilating uh actually i will give you they are not 
The time dilation is gone. Completely. Makes traveling easier. Mm -hmm. Now, are we going to take a rest before we head out to Topaz? Because we've been doing actually a lot all day after the fight and rebuilding the town and keeping an eye on the Githyanki and getting the dragon settled. It's like somebody took 42 points of psychic damage they weren't expecting. Yeah. Wow. A lot of hurt. A lot of hurt. Don't worry, Storm. Took that much psychic damage, too. <laughs> <laughs> Damn swords. Thanks, guys. You know, Gandalf, has, Gandalf gave really good advice about crystal balls. I'm just saying. You should look that up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Word. 